I call this meeting of the North Adams City Council to order for May 24th, 2022. This meeting is being recorded. Will the clerk please take the roll? Barbo? Here. Blackmer? Bona? Here. Harpin? Here. Obasahan? Here. Aleskowitz? Here. Sapienza? Here. Shade? Here. Wilkinson? Here. So right now we'll uh, please stand for a moment of silence and we'll ask to please keep the people of Uvalde, Texas in your thoughts this evening. And now for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One, One nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. For all. Uh, approval for minutes of the meeting of May 10th, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Sapienza, Councilor Bona. Hearing of visitors? All in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Go Motion ahead. carries. Now we're on to the hearing of visitors that would like to speak on any agenda item for this evening. So please step to the microphone and please give your name and address and you have two minutes. Hi, my name is Robert Smith. I live at 163 North Street. Council President, Councilors, Mayor Maxey. This is in reference to Article Agenda Item 12.051. has to do with the curfew that we've been talking about. But this goes back a ways back. It goes back to a time when Councilor Harper's mother back around 2010, was uh, on this issue as well. And so was uh, Councillor Bona on this issue. And uh, Councillor Hoppe's mother wanted to get rid of it. Councillor Bona said there was no need for it because we, we have a loitering in the city where we can take care of the issue at that point. Now, back then, there were a lot of students who were around that age group, 16 to 17, who needed to be out at those hours because they had school activity. So they spoke about it as well. I'm not in favor of having to stay on the books. I think it's, it's redundant. I think it's useless. Even the police chief in our city says it's really not an enforceable thing. So I, I say what we should do tonight is get rid of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Anyone else? Okay. So without objection, we'll move on to Council, council Paper 12,125 to the beginning of the agenda. So we don't have to make uh, our fire department wait. So, any objection? So paper 12,125, Mayor's Communication Number 65, requesting time for the city clerk to publicly swear in firefighters Avery Nye and Zachary Reedy into the service with the North Adams Fire Department. So we'll file the communication without objection. Mayor, you have any remarks? Call Firefighter Nye and Firefighter Reedy to the floor with um, Chief Lefebvre and Deputy Chief Patnode. I didn't scare him away, I had him in my office earlier. <laughs> Um, tonight, it is my honor to present Firefighters Avery Nye and Firefighter Zachary Reedy for swearing in as full-time firefighters with the City of North Adams. Firefighter Nye comes, us, comes to us from Northbrook, Massachusetts. He has five years of experience with the North Brookfield Fire Department. 
During his time there, he obtained Firefighter 1 and 2 certification, Firefighter 1 and Hazmat Operations Level Responder certification. He's also taken several incident command system classes and many other classes at the Fire Academy. And he comes to us today highly recommended by the current chief of the North, of the North Brookfield Fire Department. Firefighter Reedy, he comes to us from Belchertown, Mass, a graduate of the Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Zach has a Bachelor of Science in Emergency Management and has three years of experience with the Onset Fire Department. Zach has obtained his Firefighter Level 1 and 2 certification, as well as Hazmat Operations Level Responders. Zach also has taken many incident command systems and ocean OSHA classes. Today, I'm very pleased to present these firefighters to all of you. And as you take your oath today, I ask that you promise to always be concerned for others that you have the willingness to help others, that you have the strength to bear whatever burden is faced, you're faced, and that you have the strength, the mind, and the courage to deliver safety and protection to the residents of the city of North Adams. I would now ask her, uh, Clerk Lyon to come forward and administer the oath. Quibble of mics, please. And I'll have you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I state your name. Do you solemnly swear and affirm? Do you solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially, will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties. Discharge and perform all the duties. Incumbent on me. Incumbent on me. As a firefighter for the city of North Adams. As a firefighter fire for the city of North Adams. Adams. According to the best of my ability and understanding. According to the best of my ability and understanding. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of the Constitution. Of the Constitution. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the rules, regulations, and bylaws. And the rules, regulations, and bylaws. Of the city of North Adams. Of the city of North Adams. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Council President, thank you very much. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Congratulations. I know they all got that mustache. I saw that in pictures the other day. I was like, Thank you, Council. So now we'll move on to Council Paper 8510-9F, in order amending Council Order 8510-9C under the provisions of Chapter 23, Section 23-2 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of North Adams. So this is my paper. So I'm going to file this paper without prejudice at this time because when it first came out, there were some clerical errors. So in the future in the next meeting I will probably I will represent this this paper okay uh, would you like me to make a motion to file well I, 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 I just filed I just right here I believe it's just if anybody we can I, I think we it. can just file it without prejudice yes. yeah. without okay. objection move on to paper 11,826 in order amending the revised ordinances of the City of North Adams regarding the various fees established in City Code. 
So here we'll look for an update from finance. Okay, so at this point we have, um, we, we accepted uh, and we will be recommending the reports that came to us from public service and uh, public safety. There was a couple questions I think we still needed answers. We did go over um, some of the, the price changes, uh, very few that came from the city clerk's uh, office and they actually already reviewed some of theirs during public safety such as the animal, uh, animal uh, licenses and fees. The, we're still waiting to hear on um, the uh, health and building department on some of their licensing fees. So we are not finished with this yet, um, just waiting to hear back on them. So at this point, I, we have a, a full week of finance committee uh, of the budget coming up. So um, I'm reluctant, but I'd like to uh, go, uh, let's see, uh, to the second meeting of uh, June. So you're gonna make a motion to a Make a motion, I'll make a motion that we postpone this to the second meeting of June. Okay, we have a second? Second. So moved. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> so now we'll move on to paper 12,051. Communication from Councilor Shade requesting city ordinance chapter 14, section 14.2, curfew to repeal, to be repealed. This is a continuation of, uh, I believe this was uh, a few meetings ago and it was postponed back to the meeting of tonight. So we're gonna look for an update from public safety. Okay, on uh, last Thursday, the public safety meeting, or uh, the public safety committee met. We unanimous, unanimously voted to repeal uh, City Ordinance Chapter 14, Section 14.2, entitled Curfew, and that is our recommendation to the full council at this point. We found that the law is hard, is very difficult to enforce, and the need in the city doesn't seem to be that great at this time. So, therefore, we have decided, or we have decided to uh, vote in favor of repeal. Thank you. So um, if I can just jump in for a moment, this can't be repealed until it comes back on ordinance paper. Um, so you can file the communication without objection and resubmit the ordinance on, order, uh, on ordinance paper to be repealed the following meeting. Um. So we'll file the communication right now with a, uh, with a no objection. No objections. We. Uh, and then it'll be brought back on ordinance paper. Okay, so Councilor Shado. I will. Again? Okay. Okay. Is there any discussion for that? Discussion. I, oh yeah, any discussion? Yeah, I, I'm just curious. Did you happen to hear anything back from the solicitor? The solicitor uh, did send us a letter, and basically what it said is that parts of the curfew ordinance violate the state constitution in restricting the movement of people around the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and that was the concern. There was no age limit specified in, in, the, uh, in the constitution. It says all persons are uh, able to move freely about the, uh, about the state. And it referred to a case called Commonwealth versus Weston, where the city, I believe it was the city of Lowell, had used the curfew ordinance to, uh, to, uh, to uh, prosecute a couple of uh, individuals. One individual happened to be just going to a friend's house and the other individuals were, in fact, causing trouble on the streets. And, uh, We've also had conversations with the uh, chief of police here in North Adams, and he basically told us that it's hard to enforce this curfew law because you have a lot of 
people under the age of 16 that are moving about after 10 o'clock, which I believe is the current uh, the current curfew ordinance. Uh, you know, school activities, jobs, everything else, and it's just not feasible to uh, to oh, enforce that's fine. it. Again, I was just more curious about the solicitor because that was right. one of the things that was delaying this, at least in, for me. So, uh, thank you. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Councilor Harpin. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering, um, the ordinance paper, is that just need to have the, the seal of the city on it? Is that what is that? Well, this is just a communication. So this isn't, it has to come back on formal ordinance paper so it can actually be voted on, passed to a second reading. Oh, okay. So there wasn't, back. originally there wasn't an ordinance that was mm, submitted. Correct. It wasn't, okay. there was no ordinance attached to okay. this. Okay. <clears throat> I understand. Anybody else? Good. Thank you. So we can move on to the next paper. Paper 12,120, Mayor's Communication Number 60, providing notice that FY 2023 classification and compensation plan will be presented at the meeting of May 24th, 2022. Uh, in City Council on May 10th, 2022, we voted to refer to the Finance Committee with a return date of May 24th. So I'd like to file the communication without objection and get an update from Finance. Um, we did, uh, again, review the um, CNC, and uh, there were some changes that were made, and I don't know if the mayor wants to discuss uh, any of the, the major ones. Again, um, and we did, uh, the Finance Committee did recommend uh, the approval of what was presented to us, so, and I think we, um, there might have been a couple small adjustments. Of, sure, I'm but, happy to speak to that. Great, thank you. Is okay right now? Yes. Okay. Um, so overall on the classification plan, um, page one under community development, we added a new title called Grants Fiscal Manager and Events Coordinator. And what has happened there is we were unable to fill our events coordinator position. So we looked at our current staffing level and um, Lexi in community development felt that um, she could handle portions of her, her, cur her current job as well as portions of the events coordinator. So we created a new line um, to encompass those duties and that, that position will be reviewed in December and January just to make sure that it fits together well and that it's running effectively. Um, so rather than uh, you know do this quasi kind of position, we created a new line. But basically it's taking um, most of Lexi's position and probably 50% of the events coordinator position. Um, and that salary is outlined on page one. Under um, page two, under the mayor's office, we added a position called grants and communication specialist. Um, this is similar to a position that Councillor Lamb had proposed a few years ago. This position will focus on new grant, grant assurances, grant compliances, research and external communications, as well as procurement and other administrative duties. On page three, under the Department of Public Safety, um, previously, uh, Stacy Abusey in Public Safety, her job title was changed to business manager, but the classification plan wasn't updated. So we changed that from clerk to business manager and aligned it accordingly in the classification plan. Um, and we also added a part-time clerk in the public safety division at a PT6A. And then on, also on page three under the police division, um, we, under the previous administration, the animal control officer was reclassified and changed to an S12 from an S29A. So we just changed that within the classification to reflect what currently that position is being paid. Um, any questions about the classification plan? Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Barbell. What position does Lexi currently hold in community development? Currently, um, her job is, I believe it's called the Grant Fiscal's Operation. Um, bear with me one second. Um, 
her job title is fiscal compliance. No, 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 no. Sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought, Jen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, it's grants. It's fiscal compliance officer and procurement, but she does not have procurement responsibilities in her current her current role. Um, so we created a job title to match what the job description will be. Is all right. And can I ask you one other question? Of course. Um, can you, I don't, I'm having a hard time just understanding under the community development office, because that new job is there for the fiscal manager and events coordinator, how does that differ from the director of tourism and community events or community events and events coordinator? So the director of tourism position had more um, outward forward facing programming than what Lexi has. Lexi is basically um, Susie served on a lot of committees and did a lot of outreach and programming with the with the downtown. Um, Lexi will do some of that, but majority basically focused on events and, and community efforts. Um, for example, like the downtown celebration, party in the park, those those kind of events, and bridge with other entities that are having events in the city. So there's one point person, and then she will coordinate with all of the departments. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Councilor Harpin. Um, yeah, just a broad um, question. You know, um, looking at it, and I, I don't think this is a surprise to anybody that the salaries um, throughout the city are are low. Um, if, if you if you look at them and, and you compare them, um, and and I think we're having a difficult time, you know, hiring people because of that. And I I know that there was was there a grant that that we received so that there could be a study of the salaries uh, throughout the city yes. and um, compare them to like yep. neighboring cities yep. and towns. Um, so is, the Bernard, is that something yep. we're so still the Bern working on? Yep. The Bernard yeah. administration received a $20,000 compensation and salary study that's being done by um, the Collins Center. Um, they came in and um, did interviews with employees. Now they're doing Zoom calls and talking more about job tasks and what people do. We were hopeful that we would have received it in time for the budget, but it got started too late. Um, so we'll see that information probably in the fall. Okay, so we'll, we'll see it in the fall. They're examining 42 positions. Okay, okay. And, and then we can review it at that point, and could I think we, we I mean, make changes? Uh, I think we would use that as a tool for our next budget cycle. Okay. Um, keeping in mind, I. I suspect we're going to have some sticker shock there when we see some of it come back. So it may I, have to be a plan of how we're going to come to terms and move move forward with this data. Um, but it was not ready for this budget cycle. And the reality with this um, title that we're talking about right now is I needed someone to start working on events for, for the summer. And Lexi was um, good at coming up with a solution and saying I, I can take on some more and I'd like to do more. Okay. Um, so when you have an employee who does that, um, you want to take advantage of that. Um, but also at the same time, we're sensitive to is this um, a mechanism, is this the structure that adequately addresses all of the needs that we need with both positions. Um, so that's why I left both positions there. Um, we may find in a year that this works. We may find in a year that it doesn't work. Um, but I wanted to have some wiggle room and I didn't want to give someone an assignment that was not in the classification plan. Okay, fair enough. I just wanted to make sure yeah. all, everything was yep. going to be analyzed and looked yep. at and, and we'll review it next budget season. Yeah, okay. I, th fair I enough. think um, what I'd like to do when it comes back in is um, maybe form a subcommittee to go through all of that data. Councilor yeah. Bona? Yeah. That's it and I think when we'll be bringing up compensation right now after this and uh, you know there, there were some adjustments made mm -hmm. uh, this year to this budget to compensation um, including the mayor's salary which I know is something that you've pushed for in the past mm -hmm. so um, last night we had the uh, public safety budget meeting and again num some of them got some bumps up you know in a sense that um, hopefully um, just help keep some of them but again nothing I think when we look at the whole thing yeah our jaws are gonna drop a little I don't think surprisingly though but I think we sort of know what 
we're going to be told and mm -hmm. it may it's, it's more going to be like how can we do that versus we we don't know so um so anyway so when we'll continue on to compensation i think you'll hear some of the uh, the couple of the differences thank you any other discussion or questions for the mayor i'd like to go on to the compensation plan if i could go okay okay so overall the compensation plan increased by 1.5 percent um, on page one lines s3 s4 c s6 and s8 were aligned to reflect the minimum hourly wage of 15 dollars per hour most um, we don't really use these lines but we kept them in the comp plan just in case we have to um, also on page 2 s37 and s38 were updated to reflect the contracts of the police chief fire chief and deputy fire chief in the previous compensation plan those lines were incorrect um, the z1 van driver was um, adjusted to reflect minimum wage and then also on page four, the mayor's salary is listed at 98,000 effective 7-1. So overall, the goal for the compensation plan was to adjust the lines that we knew there were problems in. And as we go with the compensation and study, we will adjust them in a future budget cycle. Those, that's kind of my summary. No, no more questions or discussion. In case of the papers filed, we will move on to paper 12,124. Uh, Mayor's communication number 64, recommending the reappointment of Arlen Chalana to the Windsor Lake Recreation Commission for a term to expire April 1st, 2025. I'll file a communication without objection. And we'll be looking for a motion to confirm. Motion to confirm. Second. Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Sapienza. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Communication passes. Paper 12,126, Mayor's Communication Number 67, to amend Chapter 2, Section 2-27, and Section 2-28 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of North Adams, FY 2023 Classification and Compensation Plan. <coughs> I'll file the communication without objection. Any other comments from the Mayor? Yeah, any other comments from the Mayor? Sorry. Any discussion or questions? Yeah, we'll move on to the next. Mm -hmm. I got it. To the ordinance. There we go. We'll move to the ordinance. <coughs> Paper 12,126. An ordinance to amend Chapter 2, Section 2 27. In section 2 28 of the revised ordinances of the city of North Adams FY 2023 classification and compensation plan. A we'll motion to pass to a second reading and publish as a municipal bulletin would be in order. I'll make a motion to, uh, to, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to, uh, pass to a second reading and publish as required. Second. Councillor Sapienza, Councillor Bona. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, she carries. Point of order. With an ordinance change, is this a roll call vote? Only when it comes back for final reading. Thank you. Paper 12,127, Mayor's Communication Number 68, presenting proclamation of, in support of LGBT Pride Month. To file the communication without order, or I'm sorry, without objection, I'm sorry. Mayor comments? Sure. So a proclamation declaring June of 2022 as Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month. 
whereas the city of North Adams supports the rights of every citizen to experience equality and freedom from discrimination. And whereas all people, regardless of age, sexual orientation, gender identity, race, color, religion, marital status, national origin, or physical challenges have the right to be treated fairly. Whereas the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities contribute to the cultural, civic, and economic successes of the city of North Adams. And whereas while as we as a society at largely increasing support of equality, it is essential to acknowledge that the need for education and awareness remains vital to end discrimination and prejudice. Whereas the city of North Adams is committed to supporting visibility, dignity, equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and gender communities, we equally take this opportunity to take action and engage in all kinds of dialogue to strengthen alliances, build acceptance, and advance equal rights. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Jennifer A. Maxey, Mayor of the City of North Adams, proclaim June 2022 as LGBT Pride Month of the City of North Adams and invite everyone to reflect on ways we can all live together, work together, communicate together, and commit to a mutual respect and understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Harpin. Yeah, just a uh, quick question through the chair to the mayor. Um, I know last year there were a few flags that were yes. put on Main Street, and we I was will, just wondering if those are yes, going to be Yes, we will okay. put them up in June after Memorial Day. Okay, perfect. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, we'll move on to Council Paper 12,128, Mayor's Communication Number 69, requesting all employees that are compensated for 800 hours per year or less of the North Adams Public Library be designated as special em, special municipal employees. I'll file the communication without objection. Yeah, that would be in order. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Yeah, motion to approve. Would be in order. Would be in order. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Councilor Bona, Councilor Sapienza. Discussion. Uh, any discussion? Councilor Wilkinson. Uh, through the chair to the mayor. Now we're focusing in this particular line item on the library. I mean, should we be considering other employees that in the city that are working less than 800 uh, uh, hours per week? Where the issue comes up is when we have employees who are members of bargaining units, whether they're within our system or an outside system, and want to come to work for us. We are finding in the library that it's common practice that a teacher may want to work part time for us, or someone um, from the state, from a college, wants to work part time for us. And I thought many years ago we declared all municipal employees as special employees um, under the administration I worked with, but we couldn't find the documentation of such. So right now, to um, address the need of in the in the the little wrinkle that we have, it's specifically the library. I really don't have other people wanting to work in public services or in other departments that fit this criteria. Um, so um, the two employees that we have were just concerned, you know, they wanted to do it to write, and when we did the inquiry, we were just told that we could designate just for the library position. That's fine, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Councilor Harpin? Um, yeah, I think this comes out to about, what, 15 hours a week extra? So it's just, it really is a, a part-time position. Okay. It is. And possibly more hours if they're a teacher in the summer. Councilor well, Bona. 800 or less. Yes, so 800 okay. or less. Councilor Bona. Yeah, uh, just for the public, if you could just define what a special municipal employee is, like what, why, why we are doing this. Yeah, so... Um, again, we look to hire people who hold other municipal offices, whether within our organization or other state positions, um, or even people who teach within the system. And we just want to designate so it doesn't look like there's any double dipping, that we recognize that they belong to either A, another state entity, or B, a bargaining unit. Thank you. Any more questions or discussion? 
Anything else from the mayor? Okay, so this one is a roll call vote. So, the clerk, please take the vote. Barbo? No. Bona? Yes. Harpin? Yes. Vasahan? Yes. Sapienza? Yes. Shade? Yes. Wilkinson? Yes. Blackmer? Aleskowitz? Yes. Seven yeas, one nay. Motion carries. Motion carries. Well, at this time, the agenda items are done. It's time for open forum. If any member of the gallery would like to speak, Mr. Smith, please say your name and address. Hi, I'm Robert Smith. I live at 163 North Street. Council President, Councilors. Mayor Maxey, I was so happy to see the news that we're getting $200,000 for the marquee. Now that should put us in a very good position in addressing the mayor on this because if we take care of the marquee and shore it up to its original strength and position, then we don't have to worry about that. That could be a good selling point for the property. And it could be a good selling point in regards to getting the agenda we want from that building when it's sold, where it will be a community-minded event center presented to the people in North Adams. So I ask Mayor Maxey, please, Try and use that $200,000 and showing up as a tool to draw in some, some people who buy that building. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, time for our mayor's updates. Okay, just a couple of quick announcements. As most of you know, Solid Sound will be in the city this week with events starting on Friday and running through Sunday. So please join me in welcoming all of our guests to the great city of North Adams. On Monday, starting at um, 10 a.m. from the American Legion, we'll be having our Memorial Day Parade. The parade route will go down American Legion Drive um, to Main Street and down Eagle to the Veterans Memorial Park. Um, also, I just wanted to remind everyone that this week we are starting summer hours at City Hall, the Council on Aging, and the Library. This means we'll be, be closing at 1 p.m. on Fridays from now until September 2nd. And I'm happy to say that all of our electronic vehicle charging stations are up and running. We charged our first car last week. Um, we have four spaces at City Hall and six at Center Street. And payment goes through an app, and there are directions on all of the stations. The Windsor Lake Concert Series will begin on Wednesday, June 1st and continue to August 31st. A schedule will be posted on our Facebook page shortly. And starting on June 1st is the Mayor's Fitness Challenge. So I challenge the City Council to come join me and walk and hike and bicycle and kayak in the month of June. Those events will also be posted on our website. But most importantly, as Mr. Smith had said, um, we did receive a grant. The actual amount is in the amount of 189000 to restore the marquee. We are in the process of developing an RFP to procure an engineer. Um, the grant is wonderful. It doesn't cover the whole project costs, but um, we have some funds set aside to complete this project. Um, so I you know, am hoping that um, by midsummer we can procure an engineer and start seeing some progress on that. Um, I want to thank the state and One Berkshire for helping us secure these funds. And another part of the Mohawk Theater project, our RFP will be going on the street tomorrow. I'm excited about that. So the RFP for the sale of the Mohawk Theater will be available in the Community Development Office starting tomorrow. We will be having a pre-proposal meeting, uh, AKA a tour of the building for interested parties on Wednesday, June 2nd from 9 to 3. This is a time where prospective bidders can come and evaluate the building, get information about the building, and just spend the day wandering around and checking it out. The proposals for the sale of the RF uh, for the Mohawk Theater will be due on Monday, July 1st at 11 o'clock. 
So m more information to follow on all that in weeks to come. Councilor Harpin? Um, through the chair to the mayor. Um, is it Thursday, June 2nd, or Wednesday the 1st that we can tour the Mohawk? Um, my notes say Wednesday, June 2nd. Is June 2nd not a Wednesday? No. <laughs> so what day is it's June 1st? So it'll be Thursday, June 2nd. Okay. okay, so it's Thursday. Okay. Thanks. Councilor Bona? Uh, through the chair, Mayor. Um, how are we going to promote the RFP? So that was the delay in getting this out the door. We spent a lot of time contacting other theaters who have done renovation projects, other architects who have worked on theater projects, and we um, are advertising in some architectural digests. Okay. Um, we, so that's like the outreach. We also have a list of people who have been in the past that we would notify, as well as the abutters. Um, and we're advertising in some different places, more geared towards arts and, and theater. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so when we when this all comes back and we come together, um, I will be asking for some representation from the council to serve on the selection review. And part of the um, rollout will be a couple public forums so the public can come and ask questions of maybe the top two or three. Um, but. That's where we're at. It took Thank a little bit longer than I thought, but most of it was based on how we were going to market it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Councilor Barbo? Uh, yeah, uh, to the mayor, um, two questions. Uh, public service did put in a uh, proposal for fees at the transfer station. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's maybe a month anyway. Mm -hmm. Do we know when those are taking effect? They should have taken effect already. Those changes should have been loaded. Yeah. Yeah. The only one that we're still working on, Counselor, is the MSW out. Okay. Um, but I can follow up with Mr. Lascarbo tomorrow. Okay. And also, um, any update on the public safety building? The building itself, um, <laughs> we... Well. We're working down two strategies. One is to find a permanent home, and two is to determine whether we need to find a temporary home. So um, in one, two, maybe about two more weeks, I need to send some kind of plan to the Architectural Access Board. Um, but we're, we're drafting an RFP for maybe some temporary space. Um, but we're also closing in on probably on some locations. Uh, where I struggle, is I need that money from the state to continue. Um, so that's where I'm struggling right now. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Councilor Bona? Mayor, you brought up that this weekend is the, obviously the Solid Sound Festival. Is there going to be anything different with how traffic and detailing works? Um, anything that other than how it's been in the past? Yeah. Um, Overall, we're going to be sensitive to the Holden Bracewell area to make sure that parking doesn't <coughs> occur on both sides of the street. Um, I know on the lower part of North Holden, there's always a concern because there's a lot of cars parked right up to the corner as well as on River Street. Um, so we're going to do a little bit better at barricading those corner spots off. Um, and then uh, I think we're going to leave the street open for the most part until Wilco plays and close it down when the big events are going and close it down when everybody's leaving. Okay. Um, we also are going to try something different this year uh, with the St. Anthony's lot and make that permit parking, um, city permit parking. So we're going to be selling parking permits. St. Anthony's or center? Or Saint, we're, we, we've Manpower wise, we can only deal with St. Okay. Anthony's this year, um, but it's prompted a bigger discussion on how we do parking overall, and um, we need to get up with modern times. Thank you. And then one last uh, with the parking on the streets, and I, I've been this one's been brought to my attention by residents in the past that the hill on Liberty Street that comes off of Houghton, yep. they park all oh, along that and it mm -hmm. makes it very narrow and especially for the emergency vehicles yes. that need to get to the yes. um, BMC North. There's so. a citizen that lives on Hospital Ave that complains about that regularly so I'm sure she's on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah it is it is very tight up there. Yeah. Councillor Harpin? Um, two things. 
Um, a, another parking area that I saw during some of the events at Mass Milka is, I believe it's Lincoln Street. It's the yep. one that goes around to where Littles used to be. Yep, Sperry Avenue. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's it, Sperry Avenue. Yeah. Um, and I am very happy to hear that there's um, there's going to be some permit parking. This is the city parking lot yes. that you're talking about. Because yes. I know two years ago when we brought up fees, Councilor Brona and I were on the Finance Committee, and that was an issue that we brought up that we wanted to discuss further and it just never went anywhere so it, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that it, it it's an area where the city can really um, use some extra money and this is certainly an opportunity to do it At every event that I go to um, out of town you, you expect to pay for parking yeah. so so it's it's good to see that that is 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 being utilized we really wanted to do center street as well um but staffing wise and resource wise we don't have the ability quite yet to do that so um it's sad that events like this have been going on so long and now we're just starting to catch on um but we'll, well get we back. knew two years yeah, ago we just right. didn't we'll get we'll get better get every implemented. we'll get better every year <laughs> we'll get better every year so we're going to give it a try this year any other counselors so I have one question is uh, we do now we know that we are exploring the, aven the avenues of revenue for parking, but the center street parking, I know you said we don't have the manpower, so but that is a hot pot yep, spot so because there are permitted parking yes. and residents do lose their parking because people who attend the concerts just fill that parking lot up. So we are going to um, mark off spots that say resident parking only. And I believe um, the police department were notifying the residents of such. So if somebody leaves for the weekend and say, oh, we're not going to be there, that's another space that we could use. Um, but we're going to try to identify a block of just for residents. Um, we at first thought we were going to do you, you know, get permits for Center Street, but we were having a hard time trying to see how we were going to coordinate with businesses and people going into the banks and the restaurants. And um, we're, you know, Again, we're just going to focus on St. Anthony's this year. Thank you. Any other questions or discussions? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Liaison updates? Committee reports and minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped one. I got ahead of myself. Committee reports and minutes. Councilor Sapienza? Yes, I just want to note and remind everybody that the uh, Public Safety Committee will be meeting on Wednesday, June 1st to discuss the uh, taxi fares. Councilor Harpin? Um, is, is that something that we can discuss now that the, it's, it's actually been filed? It's not something that's on our agenda anymore? Yes, we can discuss it, yeah. We're going to discuss an issue that's not part of our city council agenda. You can. Well, we can. Because the motion, it, it, it was filed. This it was tonight. filed, right, okay. because of incorrect paperwork, but it's something I think we need to uh, consider short term. It's not like we can, they could still discuss it. Yeah. Councilor Wilkins will have his hand raised for us. Acting President Leskowitz um, made it quite clear that he was filing it, but he's going to immediately turn around and refile it with the proper language. So if you've already got it you know, on your agenda and you know it's coming back, why postpone it for, for no reason? It's, you're ready to discuss it, discuss it. We will. Councilor Bona? Uh, yeah. Um, committees can meet. They don't have to have an item on the agenda. So committees can meet. Um, you know, a, a, a committee chair can call a meeting and have it posted. Um, so it doesn't have to be anything on the agenda to, to discuss. Um, that if a report comes up, you still have to report it, you still have to file your minutes, but it doesn't have to be on the agenda for a committee to meet. Now, if it was something that was failed, you know, yeah. then, and you're bringing back something, the same discussion, but this was a case of being filed and not a fail. Thank you, Councilor. Any other discussion? Liaison updates? None. Counselor updates? Counselor Bonham? Yep. Um, again, this is just with the Wilco weekend. I would like to put out the word to uh, the residents that the businesses downtown are still open. And uh, I know um, sometimes 
Um, I remember one year the commissioner sort of put an announcement out, told residents not to come downtown, not, you know, and um, so actually, believe it or not, with all the people that are in town, um, sometimes the downtown, they're all over Mocha, they're not in the businesses. So um, I hope, you know, this is just to, uh, to represent all the businesses that are downtown, that their doors are still open and uh, they're not maybe as busy as you think when the concerts are going on. So hopefully people still can come downtown. Thank you. Any other counselors? Seeing that there's none, there is no correspondence, so I believe a motion to adjourn would be in order. So move. Second. Second. Councilor Wilkinson, Councilor Sapienza. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye.